Welcome to number two of Daily Hypnotic Buffet 2018. The point of these sessions, these daily video thing images, is to offer some ideas, some thoughts, some things, just to tap into maybe those parts of your mind that may be able to give you something, maybe able to change the way you're thinking and the way you're feeling. And there isn't anything that you need to do. I know that some people will watch it and then they'll go away and I'll think, what's going on? Why are you just talking about stuff? But there is a reason behind it. There is a method, a method, a method to what I'm doing. And while I'm talking and while I discuss certain issues, certain thoughts that I've been thinking about, I'll also maybe talk a bit about my life as well, which is very boring at times. But there you go. This isn't supposed to be uh, edge of the seat excitement. If you want that, you can watch television or something like that. Uh, this will finish just before nine o'clock because I'm gonna watch Big Brother at nine. It's the first Big Brother of the year. So it's the launch party, so. So I've been thinking about things today. A couple of things that I've been thinking about is, well, there's a few things. There's a few things that continuously come into my mind. Maybe you're the same. Maybe you think about these things as well. I'm thinking about connections with people. Uh, a question that I have for myself is often why why am I able to be caring or feel caring towards people that I've never met, wanting to help people that I've never met, people the other side of the world. Yeah, I'm not always there for people or available emotionally for people in the real world, in my life. Family, friends, people like that. So that's something to work on, isn't it? Um, also I've been thinking about the new year, starting a new day, new you know, a new period, and I've decided to make some changes for myself. Uh, I'm not sure if you've got any New Year's resolutions, if you've decided to stop smoking or stop drinking or lose weight or maybe change your job, maybe, who knows what it could be. For me, I've got a list of things that I'm kind of thinking about. Um, one is I'm enrolling in an IT uh, computer course which will last for about six months. Uh, it's one day a week, but I'm gonna enroll in that. I'm enrolling next week in that, and it starts the week after. So that'll be something that I'm gonna be focusing on. Another thing I've been thinking about is relationships. Uh, I don't, I'm not in a remote romantic relationship at the moment, haven't been for a while. And I'm starting to think maybe that's something I'd maybe like to do, I'm not sure, maybe. I can see some of the benefits of that. Another thing I'd like to do is get a light so I can shine it so that the video is a bit brighter. Because I lent a friend my lamp that I normally use, which is really, it's like the sun is so bright but it, it brightens the room up so it makes the picture better. At the moment it's a little bit, it's not very bright, which isn't good. 
but hopefully it's okay. So yeah, I've just been thinking about family, been thinking about friends, been thinking about the past. And I've had a few discussions with a friend about regrets. Whenever I say the word regrets, I feel I want to start singing the uh, Frank Sinatra song. Or Elvis Presley song, he sang that as well, didn't he? Regrets, I've had a few. But then again, way too many to mention. So I've been thinking, and I talked yesterday about some regrets that I've got. That I keep thinking about, I keep playing over things in the past that maybe it's not useful for me to be doing because I can't change the past. I can change my response to what's happened in the past. But I can't actually physically change it. So, yeah, it's something that I'm thinking about. I'm also thinking about what do I want to do with these videos that I'm making, these audios that I'm making. What is the aim behind what I'm doing? And these daily hypnotic buffets are an amalgamation of kind of everything that I've done in the past. So, and I'm doing this live today. I, I don't generally do live videos, but I decided to record this live so it's then uploaded and I haven't got to worry and put any effort into editing or anything. It's just done. Then I will say I'll download it, I'll put it onto YouTube and uh, convert it into an MP3, and you know, so it's done. It's a lot easier as long as the internet doesn't cut off. So I'd like you to just remember only watch or listen to me when you can safely close your eyes because as I said earlier I'm not on here to get you all excited. It's about calmness, it's about I do like to talk about boring people and in a sense maybe it is, especially if I talk about my life. It's, you know, for, for me if I want drama I watch television. I don't invite drama into my life, I don't uh, let drama inside my front door. It's just not something that I allow. And I'd advise everyone to follow that but it's up to you what you do in your life. So another thing I've been thinking about is it's a very sad thing that's happened in my local area. Uh, it was on the news, I think it's local, but it was on the news and uh, a young lady, um, they think that she's walked into the sea and died and they think that she she had depression and anxiety and things like that and it just got me thinking that there's times when I, f I feel that do I have to do I need to keep doing this stuff and keep um, trying to help people to feel more relaxed and calmer and more able to Maybe step back, you know, take a little step back and be able to view your life just from a different angle. Just giving yourself, allowing yourself a little bit of space so that you can reduce levels of stress and anxiety and find a way to cope with some situations in your life in a more productive and a healthier way with less suffering and that's kind of what I've been trying to do with a lot of my things over the years sometimes I think I'm just repeating myself a lot and I do I mind why am I still doing this stuff just but then I see something on the news like that and there are millions of people 
in the world. Millions, hundreds of thousands, thousands of people probably just in my town or my area that have got stress, that are maybe ill with anxiety, um, that may benefit from listening to a really boring English person with a stripy t-shirt with glasses and a kind of a baldy kind of head just talking and it seems like it's about nothing the thing is when you listen to me when you take the time out to watch my funny face moving around when I talk it gives you a break from the other stuff it takes you away from the other stuff it's kind of like a, a meditative experience in a sense where it's not the same as meditation but one of the things about meditation is it's a time some people think that meditation is where you sit there and there's no thoughts well that's that's death that's that's not meditation sitting there the idea is you allow the thoughts to come and you don't hold on to them you allow them to go and the more thoughts and things that you're thinking about the more you notice you're thinking about when you're meditating in a sense the better you're doing because you're noticing those feelings and those thoughts arising and you're noticing them as they're going and you get to realize that actually all emotions all feelings all thoughts are like waves you know literally they just they come and they go but you can hold on to them if you want to and there seems to be a culture or an expectation or whatever you want to call it where we're expected to hold on to feelings quite often the unhappy ones I've actually seen people arguing in the past and one person says something that's quite funny and the other person laughs so they're both in an argument with each other and one person says something and the other person laughs and then I've watched the person that's laughing and how they have to move away from finding it funny to get back into that sense of anger and frustration and hostility get to get back into those feelings sometimes it, they can do it quickly sometimes it takes a little while but it's interesting because the you know the humor the the joke or whatever it was that made the person laugh has interrupted their process and that's what this can be like interrupting your process by talking about my Andre my ferret by talking about the coding that I'm doing I started to learn to code that's been a new thing that I'm doing I used to do um, web design in 2000 I started learning HTML I think it was called HTM back then and it became HTML and it became HTML4 or something but anyway I learned all that stuff so I've started to relearn that and going further with it in uh, the hope that I can try and maybe at nearer the end of this year look to start some kind of career and get a job uh, which is well paid hopefully and something that I can enjoy doing and uh, just want to say hello to Carrie um, she's just said hello on here hello there's a few people watching um, some people might have said some messages so I'm sorry if I didn't notice um, because I'm doing this live um, and to say hello to a few people Diane, hi, Trish, hi um, so this is just me talking about stuff a lot of people that are watching now will have seen me before 
maybe some of you will have seen me for many, many years. I've been doing this. Um, it's now the 12th year. So I started 12 years ago doing, making videos and making MP3s online. 12 years. And uh, it's actually 20 years, pretty much to the day, that I bought my very first hypnosis book. And I started uh, reading about hypnosis and I got interested in it and then I got interested in NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, and then moved forward with that and very interested in chronic pain relief. That was one of the things that got my interest the most. The idea of being able to, just by talking, to change somebody's state, change how you're feeling by just me talking. And I like that idea. Uh, maybe there's an egotistical part of me thinking, oh, aren't I wonderful because I can help people? And there probably is a bit of that. But for, since I've been doing it for so long, it feels like a, a job. Not an, a job that I don't like doing, but a job that I should be doing. Something that I is my duty to do. And um, someone said good evening to me, so I forget. Sorry, I didn't. Hello, whoever said good evening. Diane, hi, she's waving to me. Hi. James is here as well. Hello, James. And these moments where you share, I've got this, I know it's a little bit esoterical and a little bit maybe airy fairy up in the sky kind of um, fuzzy thinking I like the idea of energy being shared the idea of Diane James Trish um, Joanne Joan you know whoever's watching or listening to this at the same time to be sharing the energy to be experiencing maybe a sense of calm among you, together, with us all. Because I feel calmer when I do these. And maybe my voice bores me. I do get bored sometimes when I'm talking. When I'm talking to another person, sometimes I just stop and just can't be bothered to finish that sentence. It was boring me. But that's probably more to do with the subject than anything else but so I've been thinking the idea of having a safe space to go to to listen to somebody just yabbering on this is just me I'm just an ordinary person um, with an extraordinary talent now I'm just an ordinary person 47 years old be 48 this year, can you believe it? 48. And I can talk forever. It's the only thing that I, I can do with any kind of confidence is just talk. I don't feel, <laughs> I don't, and even though I might just be talking rubbish at times, it's just talking. And there's power in listening. There's power in talking. There's power in the word that people say. And I think it's important for you to hear that you, you're a decent person. I think it's, we need to hear that. I think you need to hear that. I need to, need to hear that. We need to hear some nice stuff. I'm not very good at saying nice stuff to people that I know. That's what's weird about it. I can say it to you. And I realise I'm looking at myself in the camera when I'm saying it, but I'm not saying it to myself. But this power in hearing those words, because even if you don't believe it, You keep hearing stuff over and over again, whether it's negative or whether it's positive, whether it's 
um, kind or if it's you know unkind, nasty, whatever those words are, those sentences, if you keep hearing it, it affects you. Those words will affect you. So I'm here to say kind things to you. I make fun of myself, but I do do it in you know as a joke, messing about, talk about my funny face and my funny beard and you know, although the beard's quite trim at the moment, yesterday it was, I did look a bit like Santa Claus, but um, having a bad day, that uh, was Santa Claus having a bad day, but that's okay because you know, I don't really mean it, not really, I suppose I need to be a little bit careful by putting myself down put downs are quite horrible and in some ways and I've been on the receiving end of put downs like constant put downs over and over again and it, it affects it affected me and I've no doubt that if you've been in that situation you've been affected also by something that you've heard over and over again whether it's a kind thing whether it's a positive whether it's complimentary or whether it's not maybe it's just damn nasty whatever it may be someone's just done a thumbs up so I think that's someone saying yeah so we've all been on the receiving end of that and sometimes the people that are given that don't realise they're not aware of it and I know that I've also been on the giving side of that. I've said things to people that have been nasty and horrible and maybe not even thought about it, not realised what I've said. Uh, I try not to do that now. I try not to do that anymore. Uh, it's about learning. It's about growing, I guess. Being aware to a degree. But there's a lot of things I hear about things. Hi Rachel, Rachel's just come online. There's a few thing about people saying, because um, I got very much involved in Buddhism. I'm still kind of involved in it to a degree, but that as far as a religion goes, Buddhism would be my religion, I guess. Um, Rachel says hi, hello. And there's this thing about self-awareness and also with counselling talking about self-awareness for me self-awareness is about being aware of how I feel being aware of the things that I say to myself being aware of my reactions to triggers my reactions to what, how other people treat me my reactions even to food I eat my reactions to what I see on television you know that's for me that's self-awareness being aware of how I am, uh, my motivations, my the reasons behind perhaps what I do or what I say, trying to be a bit more aware of that. Some people think of self-awareness as being aware, self-aware is being aware of how you're affecting another person, when we can't really be aware of how we're affecting another person internally unless we can to a degree if someone's very expressive and you know but unless they tell you what is how they're feeling then it's very hard I find to know how I'm affecting another person so the best solution for that for me is to maybe just aim at if I do affect other people, try and aim at being in a kind way, in a, a useful way, or neutral. I don't mind neutral. Neutral is good, you know. Going, I'm not going into a shop to. If I'm going to buy groceries, I'm honestly I'm not going in there to make friends with a person on the ca who's taking the money at the cashier. I'm not in that zone of being, I'm not unfriendly, but I'm not over-friendly. 
and I realise I've done that job and sometimes it's nice to have people be friendly but at the same time it's nice to just get on with the next customer because you've got a job to do. Um, so I've sometimes, I would prefer maybe neutral, just like friendly but not over friendly, not trying to engage into a conversation or tell them about my life, that's why I do videos, so you can choose if you want to watch me or listen to me. It's not something that's forced upon you, it's not something that you're not cornered, you know. I've not sat next to you on a bus and started to talk to you. Unless of course I am sitting next to you on a bus while you're watching this, then that would be really weird. But trust me, I wouldn't sit next to anyone on the bus unless I really had to. I like to sit on my own seat because I'm like that. So this self-awareness is I think noticing the weird idiosyncrasies maybe that we have and not beating ourselves up about it because there's things I'm not a big fan of noise I'm not a big fan of uh, noisy neighbours and things like that I'm not and I probably never will be so you know I've got my own I like to take bottles of water with me when I go out because I like to have something to drink. If I, I like to plan to make sure there's a toilet wherever I go. Um, but that's probably comes with age, maybe. Just my bladder is not as strong as it used to be. Maybe. I don't know. But there's something about noticing how you feel right now. If you notice how you feel in this moment, then that is self-awareness. That is it. You're internal. You're noticing how you physically feel. Physical is a way, a good way to start, because I think as human beings we can be quite notice any physical ailments or but going beyond that you know if, if we're going to focus on a part of our body that's stiff <laughs> I'll rephrase that a part of our body that's maybe aching and um, why not focus on parts of our body that are feeling relaxed so I have a lower left abdominal issue. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but it aches and it's sometimes a bit painful. And I could focus on that. But what about my right hand? My fingers. I feel relaxed, calm. My right leg feels relaxed and calm. You know, it's I realize it's easy to say these things and you might be thinking yeah but if you had this physical thing you wouldn't say that because you'd be focused on that and but we there is a thing about get we get more of what we focus on you notice more of what you focus on maybe you notice if you notice as a part of your body that gives you pleasure that feels pleasurable and by that I mean maybe in a relaxed calm way you can notice that and you can perhaps get more in touch with that. I quite like the feeling of my eyes and my forehead when I'm relaxing. I can really, let's say if I'm doing some self-hypnosis or meditation, just got my eyes closed just now, I can feel that relaxed sense in my eyes and my forehead. And that, for me, relaxation is pleasurable. That's pleasure. I'm not talking about sex or uh, anything like that. I'm talking about just pleasure. Pleasure doesn't have to be to do with your groin or your nipples. You know, it can be. I'm not saying that's the only sexual parts, but it doesn't have to to do have to do. <laughs> I'm gonna start laughing at side. Doesn't have to to do with that. For me, pleasure is 
being able to sit down comfortably, being able to walk, feeling your, your feet on the floor. Even little things, being able to eat your food and taste the food, it's pleasurable. Being able to do a poo and, you know what I mean, just being able to just let gas out when it needs to get out. Being able to wash your hands, being able to have a bath, being able to put on clean clothes even, things like that is... And, you know, Rachel just pointed out that maybe she was drinking when I said about the groin and nipples, okay. I have to, I'm not, I'm doing this live as well, so I can't edit it. But that's the thing. This is, this is what I'm aiming to try and do. It's a gradual process. It's a gradual time together. And maybe, just maybe, I can do the same time every day and maybe what do this live on Facebook every day and perhaps it's something that would be useful something that would be yeah maybe but it gives you time to relax and be calm and I know that a couple of people that have on here understand where I'm coming from with that and also, I know that there's people, and I'd say any or everybody, whether they admit it or not, have had to deal with stress, anxiety, um, depression even to levels, levels of depression, because there are levels of depression. Um, bereavement is depression, it's just not classed as depression. Because it's generally a specific type of depression which lasts for you know this sort of kind of apparently is supposed to have stages although I still feel that in a way I'm still mourning the loss of my grandmother my nan she died three years ago two days ago I think she's the 29th of December three years ago and I don't really celebrate a birthday and I don't really even visit a grave uh, like I'd like to I don't live in the town that she was buried I don't need to do those things to remember her because I think about her every single day every day I did when she was alive and I do now so I kind of feel that I'm going on from a different direction Big Brother's starting now that's a good segue isn't it talk about my nan dying now I want to talk about Big Brother but everybody has suffered or is suffering in some way the, there's a very brilliant motivational speaker called Zig Ziglar check him out on on YouTube he's amazing he's really amazing he does do a lot of sales stuff but he's he's a proper southern uh, American proper southern accent and he's funny and, and he said and I used, to, I used to read his books back in late 90s yeah so sort of, it's kind of same sort of time probably before I started hypnosis so over 20 years ago and I've listened to his tapes and he's got videos on YouTube because YouTube wasn't around back then. One of his statements that he makes makes me really think like, yeah, he said two actually. The first one is if you treat everybody like they are suffering, then you'll be treating everybody in the correct way. And the second thing he says uh, is if you help other people get what they want, you'll end up getting what you want. So there's two things I quite like what he said. The other thing he said was, you buy my tape set. I think that's what he said, but that was a separate thing. 
But I'm going to go now. Thank you for watching. I'm going to be back tomorrow. I don't know whether to do a live one or not. So leave a message. If you think I should do these live, or if you think I should maybe just record them and stick them on YouTube and then just put a link to YouTube on there. Just let me know. Um, I'm here for you all. And, you know, even if you don't tell someone, my homework for you for today, even if you don't tell someone that you care about them, just think about how much you care. Think about one person and how much you care for them. Rachel says she wants me to do them live and she doesn't want me to do edits. You don't want edits. You know I'd take out the nipples. Uh, James, hi James, he says see you tomorrow then. So I'll tell you what I'll do is if I come back on air tomorrow, I'm not sure what time, but I'll, I'll put a post on Facebook earlier in the day just to let you know what time I'm going to be on live. It'll be around the same kind of time. Right. Lots of love to you all, and as I said, my homework is think about someone that you care about and just get in touch with that feeling. If you feel compelled to phone them up or text them, whatever, it's up to you. I'm not, I'm not going to push that on you, but just it might be someone that you're no longer in contact with, it might be someone that's passed away, it might be someone that you don't even know, maybe someone that you're attracted to, that, you, that works in a coffee bar, that you've been crazy about for seven years and doesn't even work there anymore and she's moved away and you never got a chance to tell her how much you cared about her. That's quite specific, wasn't it? So just, you know, go with how you feel. Right, lots of love to all of you. Thank you those that watched. Thank you those that have uh, left a few little comments and stuff. So bye to everyone and I'll see you tomorrow. And if you need, you can contact between now and then, if you need to meet between now and then. Now, go and watch Big Brother. See you later. By the way, my website is jasonnewland.com. Bye. Oh. Oh, wait a second. I'm trying to finish.